what's up wizards so uh today i got another drill my match for you um this is a really close one this actually uh was a game that i picked out because um i wanted to show you guys you know how easily these games can slip away from you especially when you're playing the wide vein build and against Dromai because once she starts amassing those dragons I know I preach to just ignore them but sometimes they can just get out of hand really quickly um, and this was a game where that happened so let's see how I, uh, first I'm going to start out of how I sideboard like I said before I take out all my poppers but I um, put in one nourishing I put in three blizzards two brain freeze two ice bind blue and three uh, polar caps that's my sideboard in the drill my and also um, a metacarpus node so that you can possibly you know bump up a spell and uh, kill a dragon if you need to but I think I don't remember if, yeah I get to go first here and I draw into uh, a hand where I can um, lay down some frostbites on her and hit her with an encase so she starts her turn with four frostbites and I put up a, uh, a polar blast in arsenal and freeze all of her equipment and uh, then I draw into another weather vein uh, I this is one of those hands where I want to put both of these things down. I want to put a Channel Lake Frigid down and I want to put an Insidious Chill down. Um, and it's, it's kind of a tough choice sometimes, but I think I have to go for the Channel Lake Frigid this early in the game. Um, so I get rid of the Weather Vein, uh, draw into uh, Blue Ice Bind, and it's like, which one do you prioritize? So, I think I'm going to uh, prioritize the Channel Lake Frigid this early. Although, I'm not sure that that's the right call. Because Insidious Chills really, really do uh, a lot of work in this matchup. But, I'm still going to strip a bunch of cards from her hand already. Uh, and, and I'm already at a pretty high life to uh, she's at a low life total and I haven't taken any damage yet So I'm feeling like this game is looking pretty good so far But as I said in the beginning it does start to spiral out of control really quickly She invokes uh, a Yenderai And now, I've already seen two weather veins. I know I only have five left, one of them a blue. Um, so, I'm taking a kind of a big risk by making this play here, by just using this Polar Blast to Coronet Peak her and put this uh, Freezing Point in Arsenal. Because I, I've already seen two weather veins. So, I'm not saying that it's a misplay, but I'm saying that I could really, really get punished if I don't see another weather vein soon. But I've already got her down 13 life, and, and she's under channel, so I feel like I can take that risk. But as you see, it doesn't pan out. And now I have a freezing point in arsenal, and I have drawn into a ice vein, uh, <clears throat> a, a brain freeze, a channel, and another insidious chill. So I can keep channel around while I let this freezing point just sit in arsenal, but so far it's just sitting in arsenal not doing anything. I'm losing so much value turn by turn here. And she does have a blue this turn. Uh, 
I'm just gonna throw my brain freeze in front to block this. And then just hit her with an ice vein. Uh, and, and get rid of my second insidious chill, which I'm not feeling too good about. I, I'm actually feeling pretty bad about that right now. And she's got two dragons. So I need to see a hex and I need to see um, a, another another uh, weather vein really soon. But I do kind of get to demolish her hand and keep this channel like frigid around. So that's like the bonus like side of this right now. But in truth, it's not where I want to be. Even though I've got her down 20 life currently, and I haven't taken a point of damage yet, but I have a feeling that's all about to change. And I still don't draw into a weather vane. And here's where she starts to really try to gain control of the game by uh, invoking a rake or maybe she doesn't want to play the rake if she was smart she would play the rake yeah she decides to mm, maybe not maybe maybe not maybe maybe not instead she invokes a as of a lie. And decides to probably use the rest of her resources to attack. No, she instead she just ends her turn. So Here's a hand where I'm just going to hit her with a bunch of frostbites. They're not going to do any damage, but I'm just going to attempt to slow her down. I can't keep channel around for a third turn, unfortunately, but I can put her under eight fro or four frostbites with this um, in with this uh, icy turtle. I know I won't have a card to fuse it, but I'm, s I'm just looking for that for that that weather vane. I'm just stalling the game out right now, looking for that weather vane so I can get this freezing point out of my arsenal. And this is the risk you take sometimes playing this deck. Uh, and here she's gonna. Oh, she chooses her, changes her mind. And I still don't see a weather vane, but I've seen my second uh, freezing point now. Now is where the game starts to spiral out of my control. Because I'm not drawing what I want to draw. She has enough resources to invoke a rake, the embers. Pay through all the frostbites. And now she's got a board of dragons that I just like... I, I, I have to ignore while I, I just try to fight through this and here comes this just monster horde of dragons on me I have no choice but to just take them so what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to block some of the bigger dragons and put um, put a spell in my arsenal so that I can kill a dragon in the layer step. But blocking with the freezing point is not where I want to be in this game. But it's just going to start spiraling out of control because she's got you know two Yender Eyes, an Asphalai, and a bunch of Ash Wings. Sorry about that. Someone texted me. Choose not to fuse because I don't want her to know what my arsenal is. I wanted to think it's a, a red or something like that. She sigils here, goes up to 23 life. She decides to protect that life a little bit, which is smart. She only takes one damage from that freezing point. And then here we go. Then I draw into the weather veins and the and the 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 frost hex, and she invo invokes Anuvia, which is just bad news for me. And I have no choice but to kill a dragon here in the layer step. Oops, I fuck up. I have to undo that. Or I, I, I actually don't. I just hit her with the frostbite and the damage. Which is what I should do. Yeah. Just hit her with the frostbite so she can't attack. Hit her with the damage. I don't have enough to waning moon. But then, unfortunately, I have to waste... These, I'm, I'm left with just a, such a bum hand here. I want to lay this frost hex down on her. So I'm going to have to pitch these two weather veins in order to frost hex her. Because I, I really don't have another choice. I could just use the two weather veins to coronet peak and put the frost hex in arsenal. But I don't want to do that and I don't have tunic up right now. So I'm forced to do this. And then... I do draw into a nice hand that I would like to keep, but I'm going to end up taking a whole lot of damage from whatever she decides to do this turn, which is, it looks like it's just going to be play a burn them all and I start checking her dragon horde and it's going to be a lot of damage. And this is just like one of those things, like I'm not running poppers, I only have one nourishing in the deck. And unfortunately, uh, I just wasn't seeing the cards that I needed to see until it was too late. So I'm forced to just like watch my life drain away as she just attacks with these dragons one by one. And it's just, it just feels so bad. just like that I lose like this 15 to 16 point life lead that I had just like that it's gone and she had to do nothing but play a burn them all and then just swing with this horde of dragons and she still has three cards in hand so I don't know what those cards are she hasn't played them out so I'm assuming they're defensive cards that's just what I'm assuming
but I just took just so much damage, it hurt. Um, yeah, and she even attacks insult to injury with the Uvia. She knows that I'm not going to pop it, so why not? And then I don't know what she does with those other three cards, but she just decides to pass turn. She's done a ton of damage to me. But here I can uh, lay down a few frostbites, and she does have enough arcane barrier to AB this. But we'll see what she decides to do. Um, it's still not looking good for me. I think she reconsiders. She probably checks her resources and sees that she's got the blue in hand so she can pay through the four frostbites. So I just think she decides to take all of this damage. But this game is like very quickly spiraling out of control. And she does take all the damage and I know she has a blue in hand. And I draw into an absolutely garbage hand again. And I know that, like, I have no more freezing. Uh, I'm sorry. I know I have no more weather veins because I used two at the beginning of the game. Uh, I used one just now, and I pitched the other two to play the frost hex. So here's where she plays another burn them all, uh, pitching that um, that blue that she had in hand. Still has a card left. So oops, I have to like. Turn my, I have to like turn my iPad around so that I can actually, so it doesn't cover up the priority passing. And hopefully I just get lucky and she doesn't want to pay through this last frostbite. And attack me because I'm at 16 life and she has quite enough dragons and two burn them all out now that I'll go to a very very low life total and she does decide to pitch that last dragon which was a mirror guy in order to just swing with this horde of dragons and I'm forced to just take it This is where I just count up the damage coming, make sure that I can live. I will block some of the bigger dragons to stay alive. But then my plan of attack is going to be hit her with, since she's deciding to lead with these, with these, uh, with these little, little dragons first, the little uh, ash wings first. Uh, I'm gonna decide to just block with one of these ice veins, block with one of, with the uh, in case, and then I'm going to play the the second blue, uh, yellow ice vein and fuse it with the, the frost thing so that I can try to snipe one of these ash wings out in the layer step and just survive because I can't withstand another attack like this. As you see, I, I go down to a very, very precarious life total here. And and sometimes that's just the thing with Weather Vane. Like, the cards just don't line up for you. Um, be it like Talishar, be it just how you shuffle. Like, sometimes it just does not line up. And you really, really have to... This is one of those games where you should study because this is what to do when it just doesn't work out when you don't see what you need to see yeah I'll block the first yonder eye here and then I'll block uh, the next yonder eye or, or take one I should have blocked that yonder eye with a but 
but I think I actually hold it back because I want to also Waning Moon and just chip her down just a little bit more. Yeah, I go down to two here, which is just really bad. She's still at 16. I actually go to one. Holy crap, I forgot about that. I block with Tunic, try to stay to two, which is all I can do. And then, yeah, I, I held on to this, even though I, you know, I would have got more value with blocking with this yellow ice vein. I want to hit her with waning moon because I want to try to just chip a little bit more damage in. Put this frosting in arsenal and try to kill uh, an ash wing in the layer step. I, I realized I fucked up and I, I uh, actually pitched the um, pitched the frosting uh, but never see this is where I realized I fucked up and pitched the frosting never play um, a um, I'm sorry never play the uh the other card on her turn because she can just pitch the furnace and get around that and it does does me no good so putting this frosting in arsenal is where i want to be because i want to kill an, 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 a, a dragon if i have like to, to stay alive that's the only way i'm going to stay alive is by stripping her hand here a little bit dealing her a little bit of extra damage which she did she took the waning moon which is good and then she took the four so i have her in t at 10 i have her at least in a kill range if i can just stay alive this next turn um and she does she she leads with with a with an ash wing and she probably has a sigil of solace behind it she does to give a go again but i can go ahead and kill this ash wing and her turn she goes back up to 13. I'm still at 2, but her turn's over at least. And I can Waning Moon to keep her at 10. Unless she chooses to AB some of this. We'll see. I don't think she realizes that I uh, am sniping the Ashwing just yet. Or she would have used some of those cards to AB. She would have used some of those cards in her hand to AB. So... I think she was thinking that she had to pay through the frostbite but she does stay at 10 and then what i can do is i can put this uh third insidious chill that i've seen now i can finally play it i did gain a life from heart of fendall which is really good and she does an undo for some reason I think she's like, I don't know what she's doing here. She's trying to do some sn some sneaky shit. But so I can put I can put this insidious chill down, and uh, put this blue ice bind in arsenal. So the purpose of that is it I can trigger insidious chill with it and also snipe an Ashwing if she's if she's you know silly enough to lead with another Ashwing, which. I'm going to pitch the frosting so that hopefully she's like, okay, he pitched the frosting. There's not, a, there's, you know, he doesn't have something to kill another Ashwing. But there is hope. She's at nine. And I draw into a freezing point, which, here we go, I can potentially kill her. If I can strip all the cards out of her hand. Because I have Metacarpus node up, so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I just have to play this, and she leads with the Asvali this turn. So...
what I'm going to do is fuse, uh, start stripping some of the cards from her hand, pump this up with Metacarpus Node, Waning Moon, and then a pumped up Freezing Point should be enough damage to kill her. Although I chose not to Metacarpus Node that, which was probably not smart. I should have Metacarpus Node that just to be on the safe side. did have enough resources to do this. Huh. Huh. I should have tried to kill her, but I instead I played a blizzard. I think I could have killed her if I would have just metacarpus the ice bind. I think I would have had enough damage. But th this turn, I'm, I'm priced into it anyways. She's at six life, so I'm priced into it. I have to uh, break my boots here. But but looking back on this game, if I would have Metacarpus, the Ice Bind, Metacarpus, the Freezing Point, and Waning Moon, that would have been enough damage to fight through uh, a handful of reds and kill her. Sometimes you just like don't see your hexes until super late and the cards just don't align up. She goes to exactly three. I have enough to waning moon. GG's but this game I wanted to highlight this game because it really does show you like what to do when you have these like really bad hands and how to fight through that and how quickly these games can spiral out of control like as you, I, I had a I had a 16 point life lead she was at 20 I had her down to 20 and uh it, she just built up a board of dragons and really kind of um, just let it spiral out of control very quickly. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know how you feel about this. Uh, I notice a lot of you guys out there are not subscribed to the channel, so let's change that. Please. All right. Thanks, guys. Peace out, wizards.